Next to the extraordinary story of Princess Haya bint al Hussein, the wife of the ruler of Dubai, who's reported to have fled to London with her two children and to be seeking a divorce from her husband, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid al Maktoum. It's the latest scandal to hit the family after last year's reported mid ocean abduction of Princess Latifa, a daughter of Sheikh Mohammed, as she tried to flee Dubai. And it's a story with plenty of Irish connections, including a former president, as Robert Short now reports. This is a story of two Arab princesses. One has disappeared from public view in dramatic circumstances. The other has reportedly absconded to London. It's the story of the ruler of Dubai who owns eight stud farms in Ireland. It involves a former president of Ireland. And it's set against the backdrop of a long and deep relationship between the Dubai royal family and this country. Last year, the world heard an incredible tale. Princess Latifa Al Maktoum is the daughter of the ruler of Dubai, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. The Sheikh has extensive interests in the horse racing industry in Ireland. Last year, Princess Latifa attempted to escape from Dubai. Before her attempt, she recorded this video. So, this video could save my life. And if you are watching this video, it's not such a good thing. Either I'm dead or I'm in a very, very, very bad situation. She was helped by a Finnish friend in Dubai, Tina Johayanen, who says this video shows Latifa training for her escape. According to Johayanen, the pair drove across the border of the United Arab Emirates and into Oman. They then used jet skis to liaise with a boat waiting offshore. The boat was piloted by a former French intelligence officer, but they were intercepted, armed men boarded, and Latifa was forcibly returned to Dubai. Tina recounted the tale to a Swedish chat show. Two men dragged me to the outer deck, and I was like pushed um, against the railing, and they were telling me to take my last breath, and they were threatening to shoot my brain out. It's also been alleged that a sister of Latifa, Princess Shamsa, was kidnapped in Cambridge 19 years ago and returned to Dubai after she had absconded from her father's estate in the UK. Now enter former President Mary Robinson. She visited Princess Latifa in Dubai late last year at the invitation of Princess Haya bint Al Hussein, Latifa's stepmother and the sixth wife of Sheikh Mohammed. This is a troubled young woman who has a serious um, medical situation, she's receiving psychiatric, psychi psychiatric care. She is in the care and loving care of her family. Mrs. Robinson was criticised for having said this at the time, prompting Princess Haya to give this interview to Mariam Thanukan on RTE Radio 1. It's important to say that Mary made no judgment. I asked her here myself um, for, for her help, for her opinion, um, and for her counsel. And it's something that's a personal appeal. And to someone that I deeply respect, it's not anything other than a private family matter. Princess Haya is well known in Ireland. She spent some years of her youth here show jumping. In 2009, she gave this interview. Yes, it's wonderful. It really, really feels like being home. I probably spent the most formative years of my life here in Ireland. This week it emerged that Princess Haya herself has left Dubai and is in hiding in London. It's reported she's initiated legal proceedings against Sheikh Mohammed seeking a divorce. Yesterday, former President Robinson made this comment when asked a question about the United Arab Emirates. I really have nothing more to say about that. I have never been friends except with Princess Haya. One friend who is still my friend. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Haya's husband, Sheikh Mohammed, keeps a lower profile but is equally well known here. He's the owner of eight stud farms in Ireland, including Kildangan Stud in County Kildare, employing 250 people directly. It's all part of his international bloodstock and racing enterprise, Godolphin and Darley Stud Group. Sheikh Mohammed is the Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates, of which Dubai is a part. Earlier this year, Amnesty International accused the UAE of giving arms to militias in Yemen suspected of war crimes. The UAE has been part of the Saudi coalition fighting in Yemen. Away. Wins it 
Ireland's connections with Dubai's ruling family go back a long way. Sheikh Mohammed's brother, Sheikh Hamdan bin Rashid Al Maktoum, funded the construction of the mosque and Islamic cultural centre in Klonski in Dublin. The foundation continues to fund the running of the mosque. This week, the foundation announced a new partnership with Trinity College, which will open a new Al Maktoum Centre for Middle Eastern Studies. The Embassy of the United Arab Emirates had no comment to make when contacted by Primetime today. Robert Short reporting and I'm joined now via Skype by human rights lawyer David Haig of the Free Latifa campaign. David, thanks for joining us. Um, what, what does this latest development mean for your campaign to help Princess Latifa? I think, I think for, for the, our, our campaign to Free Latifa, it, it's, it's a very good development. What it, what it means now is essentially that Latifa's case, Latifa's evidence, the video that many millions around the world has seen and her very brave bid for freedom, which has inspired many women in the Gulf, is now going to be viewed in an English court as opposed to in the UAE. Um, all her evidence, that of her older sister Shamza, who was kidnapped from the streets of Cambridge, um, um, allegedly by um, her father's forces in 2000, it's all going to come under the spotlight of a UK court when that UK court decides whether or not it is safe to send two youngsters to Dubai um, into the hands of, of, of Sheikh Mohammed. Now, the BBC security correspondent quoting sources close to Princess Haya, Haya says she recently discovered disturbing facts about Princess Latifa's case. Given her role in, in publicly rejecting claims about Latifa's declaration, does that, see, does that seem a bit odd? I mean, it, it does seem to be something like a 180. Now, at the time when we, we, we were shocked, we were sh very shocked at Mary Robinson's involvement, um, not so shocked at um, Princess Hyer's involvement in what we describe as a publicity stunt gone wrong to, to essentially whitewash Latifah's kidnap in December. Um, but th what we've got to remember, and, and, and something that we're now doing, at the time we wrote to the UN and several other leading NGOs wrote to the United Nations and complained about Princess Hyer, because she is a, peace, a, a current peace ambassador, we pointed out various rules of the UN and the potential conflict of interest. Um, but now we're actually going to withdraw that complaint because it may very well be that she was under similar amounts of duress and frightened for her life, like Latifa, Shamza, and, and, and no doubt many female members of the family and many male members of the family. Now, Mary Robinson says she is still a friend of Princess Hyas. What would you like to hear from her now? I think, I think really now it, it, it's a very, it was a chance for Mary Robinson to redeem herself early this year. She didn't take that chance. It's now a chance again for Mary Robinson to try and set right the wrongs that she's done to Latifa and many other women that would have followed Latifa or been inspired by her in the Gulf. As you know, as you may know, in the Gulf, women are very much seen as the property of men. And, and that's something which, which really needs to change. Latifa's story has inspired many. We're seeing many in the UAE running away. We're seeing many young ladies in Saudi. And now Princess Latifa, you know, Princess Haya, the the wife of one of the rulers of the Emirates running away. Um, so I think I think Mary Robinson being one of the, well, the only woman in that meeting that is free and safe to speak, needs to tell the world what really happened. Okay, and um, finally, uh, the Maktoums are incredibly wealthy, they're incredibly powerful, they're incredibly well connected. I presume the British government isn't delighted to have this problem potentially on their doorstep. I, I imagine it's a huge diplomatic issue, diplomatic issue rather, sorry, for, um, for England as well as for the Middle East, but also, you know, and, and for Jordan as well, because, you know, don't forget there's Jordan involved here. So I think it's, it, it's, a, it's a potential issue. It, it shouldn't need to be. It should be dealt with as a normal family matter in the sense that, um, you know, in the sense that divorces happen all the time, custody battles happen all the time. What usually there isn't, though, there usually isn't a very powerful and, as you said, immensely wealthy tyrant dictator who ignores laws all around the world, kidnaps his own family at his will. That, that's the difference here. Okay, David Haig, thank you very much indeed for joining us.